Yeah, okay. Well, thank you for inviting me to present my master's uh, thesis uh, project on measuring energy sustainability of urban communities. And I'm glad to see the, the big link, the great link there is with also the studies of Umberto. It is indeed a comparison analysis of four recently developed sustainability assessment tools for urban areas. Well, as it has already been uh, stated, uh, you all know that we live in an urban world. And uh, since 2008, more than uh, half of the world's population live in urban settlements. And that uh, has, of course, a great impact to the energy consumption and the CO2 emissions of the cities. Uh, it is not too much to say, then, that the battle for sustainable development will be lost or won in the cities. Recognizing this fact, more and more urban communities embark on the journey to drastically reduce their CO2 emissions and become carbon neutral. How can we monitor, though, the progress of uh, these urban areas and measure the level of energy sustainability they have achieved? Well, uh, the realization that measuring only the performance uh, of single buildings is not enough anymore uh, has led recently to the development of assessment tools that measure the broader context of urban environment, which means districts, neighborhoods, and urban communities in general. The to these tools are designed to evaluate if uh, the development or redevelopment plans for an area meet a certain high level of sustainability. Their function uh, is actually to work as a communication framework uh, between uh, designers and decision makers, uh, namely a framework that uh, would facilitate dialogue between the relevant stakeholders in formulating and pursuing a sustainable design project. Owing to the fact that these tools have been uh, launched recently, as I said, uh, the number of scientific articles uh, until uh, so far uh, examining their methods and their effectiveness is limited. Uh, for this reason, uh, yeah. uh, as a result, I focused my study uh, on the analysis and comparison of four uh, of these tools. I chose two of the most uh, prevailing and internationally applied tools, the English uh, BRIAM communities and the American Lead uh, for Neighborhood Development. And uh, I also uh, chose two Dutch tools, uh, the Dutch Briam, uh, Briam Habits and Wickeling, and uh, Hetterstedt and Bau, uh, that is used currently from different Dutch municipalities, because uh, the case study area I examined uh, was in the Netherlands. Uh, these tools measure uh, different themes of urban sustainability, but uh, I was focused particularly only on how do they measure energy. And uh, more specifically, I, I was uh, wondering how is energy sustainability assessed by the four assessment tools for urban communities in theory and in practice. Uh, as a result, my methodology was uh, divided in two clear parts. The first part was the theoretical uh, analysis of the tool, a comparison analysis based on the literature. And the second part was a case study to examine how do these tools function under real life conditions. For the first part, the theoretical analysis of the tools, I started uh, first with uh, studying different examples of eco-cities with uh, exemplary energy performance. And I also reviewed the literature on the principles of energy-efficient urban areas. From these two, I came with some prerequisite criteria for urban energy efficiency. In the same time, I studied uh, urban sustainability assessments like uh, city awards and city rankings existing in the literature. And from them, I collected energy indicators that already exist in order to measure uh, energy in urban areas. Uh, from the prerequisite criteria and the indicators that exist, I created a complete, a comprehensive list of energy indicators measuring urban energy efficiency. And I used this list in order to filter the tools and test whether they, inc whether they include uh, these criteria and uh, these indicators. The list I created uh, included 21 quantitative energy indicators uh, within these themes. And I set uh, three indicators as key indicators 
energy consumption of the area, CO2 emissions, and the renewable energy use of the area. Because these indicators uh, have the uh, potential to give a complete overview of the energy performance of the area. Here you already see the, the results of the comparison of the tools with this list I created. Uh, the names uh, around the spider diagrams are uh, the themes of uh, the comprehensive list. The ones uh, with red color are the key indicators. And uh, you can see which of these indicators the tools uh, included, which of these themes, and uh, which not. There are, imp there are uh, for example, important key indicators, the energy consumption that was not included in the tools. And uh, you can also see that uh, Hatta, Arsted, and Bao had the biggest overlap, uh, the similar themes with the list. And they included also the three main key indicators. This is a general overview of the results of the comparison and shows the, how, per, uh, how the percentage of compatibility of the tools with the list. In general, as you can see, the percentages are quite low, and uh, there were two main reasons for that. The first was that uh, the tools uh, neglected some of the, of the themes and indicators of the criteria included in the list. And the second and most important uh, is that the, the tools use the indicators measuring the relative improvement of the area in time. For example, the tools use indicators measuring how much uh, has the energy consumption of the area been reduced after the development of the plan, uh, whether it has been reduced by 20%, 30%, while the list included indicators measuring the actual performance of the area, giving information about, for example, the energy use mega in megajoule per, per capita or per uh, square meter, and the actual CO2 emissions. The Dutch tool, Hector and Bau, was the most compatible with the indicators of the list since uh, its methodology is more focused on providing information about the energy performance and the CO2 emissions. Uh, before and after the development of the plan. This is uh, another comparison of the tools. It is, uh, it is not anymore a comparison with the generic list. It's a comparison of the tools with each other. And it's based on the value that the tools uh, reward on different themes, uh, depending on how much points do the tools award an area for fulfilling a criterion. You can see from these diagrams that the tools uh, bring on communities and lead for neighborhood development uh, give primary focus, which means they reward more points to an area. If uh, the area includes uh, sustainable certified buildings, than if, for example, it incorporates uh, renewable energy or if it has, uh, energy in, uh, if it has improved uh, energy efficiency. Uh, you may see that the tool Briam and Nell Habits on Vickling has a more holistic approach and is actually distributing uh, the points and the value um, more, uh, more in the same way in between the different things, which is, uh, the different themes, which is something preferable. Uh, the second part of the, of the analysis of the tools was uh, the practical application of the tools to a case study area, as I mentioned. Uh, the case study was chosen line by area, the central quarter of the city of Rotterdam, which is uh, currently under redevelopment. Um, the tools uh, were applied in order to assess uh, these uh, redevelopment plans. Here you can already see the results, uh, the scores that uh, the area, the plans of the area achieved uh, by each of the tools. And uh, this is a table that shows you how we came to the scores and how the application procedure happened, which indicators were included or not, uh, just to have an idea. In general, as an overview, you can see that uh, the plans of Lineban area did not achieve, uh, did not uh, sco score significantly low in the energy indicators uh, of the tools. Uh, more specifically, for the tools uh, BRIM communities and lead for neighborhood development, uh, the area achieved zero points uh, for the energy performance. And that was because uh, these tools, in order to reward uh, any points to the area, asked as a prerequisite criterion the existence of lead or BRIM certified buildings in the area. Since there were no 
uh, certified buildings, the uh, criterion could not be fulfilled and the area could not achieve any score for its energy performance. And here I'm uh, resuming uh, the main uh, findings I, uh, that came uh, that, that revealed from the practical application of the tools. Firstly, uh, it was noticed that the prerequisite criteria of uh, that um, about certified buildings that the tools, BRIAM communities, and lead for neighborhood development uh, include cannot be easily fulfilled by regular areas, as for example, it happened in the case of Lineba. Um, this criteria can be very limited and they might exclude uh, otherwise sustainable areas from being certified, considering the fact that uh, there are not so many BRIM or LEED certified buildings around the world. Second important uh, finding uh, that it appeared from the practice is uh, that, this, that the tools BRIM and LEED uh, have uh, limitations to certified redevelopment plans of existing areas because some of their criteria have too high requirements. Their methods uh, work best actually for newly built areas or when at least 50% of the total floor area consists of new buildings. Finally, it was, uh, became clear that the application procedure of the tools was a highly demanding process since it required an excessive amount of uh, energy data that sometimes was difficult to cover and the assumptions had to be made. Considering all that both, uh, one uh, might question whether these tools uh, could assist uh, the local authorities in evaluating their plans and uh, could improve actually the, the planning procedure of uh, municipalities. And uh, I would like here to, to make a summary of uh, the main conclusions uh, of the whole study. Uh, well, these tools, uh, these assessment tools, uh, can indeed be useful uh, for the designers to improve the efficiency and sustainability of their plans. However, uh, by studying their methods more in detail, I realized that these tools are solely confined to measuring the relative improvement of an area, its progress uh, during time. Uh, with respect, though, to the actual energy use and the uh, actual CO2 emissions, these tools give no quantitative evidence that a project that, a project that has been uh, highly rated will emit uh, less carbon than a lower rated uh, project. As a result, uh, these tools cannot be used to compare the performance between different areas. And uh, let me present an example on this point. Uh, let's assume that uh, a neighborhood in the U.S. has improved its energy performance by 30% and has achieved a LEED goal certification, while a neighborhood in Europe has improved its energy performance by 10% and has achieved a LEED bronze certification. However, even if we have these titles, we still cannot know whether the total energy consumption of the area in the U.S is lower than the energy used in the area in Europe. And this is how we can uh, have uh, misleading uh, results and how the title can, the rankings can bring res misleading results. Another important uh, conclusion uh, about the tools uh, was that uh, they actually give more emphasis to sustainable certified buildings than uh, to other parameters of energy sustainability such as, for example, the energy efficiency of the area or the share of renewable, en renewable energy production within the area. It seems like uh, the tools uh, still have the tendency to assume that the area is an aggregation of single buildings. And if all the buildings are sustainable and certified, then uh, the whole area will also be sustainable. However, in that way, they miss the important interdependencies and synergies that exist in sustainable urban areas, in sustainable urban design. And uh, to this point, I would like to bring another example. Uh, let's assume that uh, on the neighborhood you can see on the picture, a new certified building is added, even if the building has an excellent energy performance, the final outcome is not sustainable anymore since, it, since this building does not let the house in the back to take advantage of the solar gains. This example so, uh, wants to show that even if 
all the buildings in the area are sustainable certified, this doesn't imply that the uh, final area will also be sustainable. And uh, I would like to close my presentation with uh, some recommendations um, for an improved uh, assessment uh, tool and for a comprehensive uh, methodology for measuring energy in urban, in urban areas. What I, what I realized and uh, what I understood from all the study uh, is that it's very important, it is essential to have a common measuring language for urban energy efficiency. Meaning uh, we need a common language between all the relevant stakeholders and the academics developing models, the international institutions developing assessment systems, but also the local authorities implementing these tools. Uh, more specifically, with regards to the assessment tools, it is important uh, to always include quantitative indicators measuring the energy consumption and the CO2 emissions of the area uh, per, floor, per square meter floor area. An improved tool should actually uh, be able to provide information about the energy perf performance of the area before and after the implementation of a plan. To achieve this, uh, uh, the tool should uh, use actual data about energy consumption in the area before the plan and should also provide estimation, estimations about the energy consumption after the plan based on the added uh, floor area, square meters of new or renovated buildings and their energy performance characteristics. In that way, an assessment tool can measure and rate both the progress of the area in time but also uh, compare its energy performance with other areas. That was uh, my presentation. Uh, thank you very much. I'm uh, open for questions and for discussions since uh, also the other people are um, very relevant to the topic.